hi, I'm not a photographer, but I like taking photos. It's sort of a hobby, you might say. And I've discovered that you can learn so much from other creative crafts and apply it to your own main craft. In my case, it's music and probably yours as well. And I will tell you in this video a few of the things I learned from photography, from cooking, which I've applied to my mus musicianship. So let's go inside because it's, it's cold and it's snowing. There are probably more things I've learned from other creative genres than these, but I decided to make this list 10 things. Some of the things you will probably think are pretty obvious, but maybe some of the things you haven't thought about. The last thing is actually the hardest one. Let's start. Number one, the less I play, the more I'm heard. Yes, when I'm working as a sound engineer in the studio or especially live, I've discovered that musicians that play what they should and not so much more, I can have louder in my mix. So if you want to be heard on stage or in the studio, play less. Then the things you will do extra will be heard more. Number two, limitations can boost creativity. I will take photography as an example. Let's say that you're out taking photos with a zoom lens like this. You can just stand and have a wide shot or a more narrow shot depending on how you zoom. But let's say you have a prime lens instead like this. These have a fixed focal length so you can't zoom with it. Then you have to search for the compositions within the limit of the lens. That will actually make you search for that focal length more and the more you use it, the more you will search for that focal length. The same is applicable to music. Maybe you don't need to write songs with 30 tracks. Often the songs get better also if you use fewer tracks when writing a song. Then the song is based on melody, harmony, arrangement and rhythm instead of sound. Number three, the importance of drama. When I've been working with theater, I've learned amongst many things that it's so important to keep the audience intrigued. And you have to create a drama. You have to slow things down to be able to speed them up. You have to make things small to be able to notice the big things. And the same is with music. Maybe take down the verse with only a few instruments. Maybe make the verse narrower and the chorus wider. So it really lifts when the chorus comes. And sometimes also you need to show people what to expect. If you're gonna get scared in a scary movie, you will hear some scary music or sound effects before you actually get scared. Do that with music also. Rock music often use drum fills, EDM use sweeps and things, but you can do it in all types of genres. Number four, rules are not rules. Once again, I will take photography as an example because you've all heard about the rule of thirds. You have a grid and the grid is divided into three parts, both horizontally and vertically. That's a pretty good rule. Placing a horizon on one of the lines is more pleasant to the eyes than placing a horizon in the middle. But it's, it's not against the law to break that rule. Sometimes it's good to place the horizon directly in the middle. You get a sort of mirrored effect in your photo and also place subject you want to focus on in the middle or out on the sides. That could be your artful creative choice. You can do it with music also. Before Beatles, symphony orchestra instruments have never been heard in rock and pop music. Before Bob Marley, they never used clavinet or Hammond organ in reggae music. I think it worked okay. Number five, make a sketch of the whole picture. This is maybe most applicable to writing songs and mixing songs. A painter makes a sketch of the whole picture before going into details because they want to know how the all, whole area of the picture would feel like before they get into details. Do that when writing music and mixing music as well. I'm not a painter. I just read about pa painters. Yeah. Number six, don't use recipes. No chef in the world with honor uses recipes when they are inventing a dish, at least in a good quality restaurant. 
they invent a dish and then they use the recipe so the guests will have the same quality food for the few months that dish is on the menu. And then they start from scratch and invent a new dish. And it's the same with music. Don't do what you usually do all the time. Try new things. Maybe EQ the bass drum in a different way than you usually do. It could be a disaster. It could also be something cool. Does that make sense? Well, I hope so. I mean, try to acknowledge what role each instrument, vocal, drum, percussion, have in your song and then do a recipe out of those elements. Number seven is pretty obvious, make deadlines because you will get more creative if you set deadlines. Say to yourself, I will write this song finished until Friday. I will write five songs this month. I will mix this album in three weeks and so on. Then it will happen also. Duke Ellington once said when someone asked him how he can be so creative, he said, it's easy, give me a deadline. Number eight, take away instead of add. When you're mixing a song, if you want it fatter, take away some instruments and make the instruments you have bigger. That will make the song fatter. You've all heard that too much on a plate of food just makes it messy. Photographers always look for distracting elements, distracting from the subject they are taking photo of. So they will try to get rid of those. Number nine, spend money on time and inspiration, not on gear. Yeah, well, gear is somewhat important, but most gear nowadays is decent, good enough. Even a cheap mic preamp, a cheap microphone, a cheap uh, computer, and some of the doors are free. Spend money on taking time off work, maybe go on some travel to get inspiration, go and see concerts. That is more important often, I think, than longing for that fancy gear. Some photographers spend their money on a great camera and fancy lenses and a fancy tripod and so on, and then they don't have money to go and take pictures. Aim for a little less, still good enough though, on gear. And if you're a photographer, hire a model if you want to take portraits, or go on a trip if you want to take landscape photos. Do the same with music. Number 10 is the hardest one, especially for me, is don't care about what other people think. I struggle with this a lot. I have become better, but I need to get even better. I struggle with it every day. Would, what would he or she think about me doing this? If I like it, it should be good enough. A famous artist in Sweden said if he writes a song and he likes it, he is sure that other people will like it too because we're not that different. Like in Swedish is gilla, gilla. If you like this video, you can press the thumbs up. You can also comment down below if you agree or disagree with my list. And subscribe also, that helps me actually. Until next time, roger that.